Well, what a week we had last week on the S&P 500. So this video will be about where do we go from here. Um, by all rights, uh, last Monday when we opened, we should have been negative. Uh, if, if you look at everything that was going on, uh, it, I would have thought that we would have been negative. Uh, but Monday, uh, S&Ps hit the highs into the close. Uh, Tuesday, S&Ps hit the highs into the close. And in fact, in the last eight minutes, I think it was something like $3.2 billion came into the market in those last eight minutes on Tuesday. Money couldn't get in these markets fast enough while cities burned. Kind of makes your head spin going, what, what world are we living in? Uh, Wednesday, ADP report came out suggesting that the jobs report was going to be better uh, than what people anticipated and up we went and only in the last five minutes or so did we sell off a bit but we still were positive thursday was a muted day we were down but not much and then friday uh, even before the jobs report came out futures were up 20 22 23 points uh, and that was a signal uh, to buy the uh, etf the spy in pre-market so i went ahead and bought the spy in pre-market because I knew right then and there that the jobs report wasn't going to matter. We were going to have a, a, an up day uh, regardless of what the jobs report said, regardless. Uh, and I'll show you how I get to that conclusion. And then I will give you a new trade on the s and I've closed my two uh, previous positions. Uh, the first position I put on was a risk reversal, which means you buy an out of the money call and you finance it with an out of the money put. It gives you a free long position uh, on the SPY, but if the market goes down, you are agreeing to buy it at a lower price. I closed that with a, uh, a fairly good profit. There was a little bit of a pullback, which was nice. I put on a combo. Uh, which means I'm going to buy a call pretty much at the money, at the strike of where the SPY was, and I'm going to finance it deeper with two out-of-the-money calls, which is riskier than a risk reversal, but I go deeper in, uh, uh, deeper uh, out of the money for the puts. And, well, you saw what happened. Um, I think I had my uh, call at 294, uh, went to 300, 310, 320. Uh, that one paid off very nice. I closed that as well. On Monday, I'll be putting on the trade that I'm going to describe to you, and I'm going to give you what I think is my year-end target on the SPY uh, or on the S&P 500. And you will probably want to leave nothing but nasty comments below telling me that I live in a fantasy world and there's something wrong with me and I'm just a cheerleader, but bear with me here. Let me see if I can get you there. Um, here is a chart. If we pull out over a long period of time and draw a line of best fit on the SPY, there it is. And it pays a dividend. Every quarter it pays a dividend. Every quarter. Does that look like a short to you? Anybody with any experience, if I uh, showed you a chart of any stock and it had a trend that looked like that, that paid dividends uh, quarterly, would you say, whoa, that's a screaming short? It doesn't look like a short at all. You may argue, but the economy, the economy. Well, let's move to a business cycle. And hopefully when I describe this, it'll begin to make a little bit more sense. Let's do our business cycle. It's a stylized business cycle. It's business cycles aren't that obvious. I'm doing it to make a point. Here's your expansion. Here's late expansion. Here's the peak. Uh, and then you have a contraction. Here's your recession. Then you have a recovery. And the recovery is, of course, up to the point, the last high point. And past that, you have an expansion. There's your peak again at the peak. In fact, I would say from mid-expansion to late expansion to the peak. Good news is good news. Bad news is bad news. So if we were, if none of this had happened and second quarter was coming up, remember we were at 3,400 before uh, this all went bad, <clears throat> uh, we probably would have drifted maybe up to 35 before we saw earnings. And let's say that earnings were expected to come in with 4% growth year over year, but they came in at 2.5% growth. That's bad news. So the market would take that into consideration that corporate earnings, the growth in corporate earnings are slowing down and it would adjust its price. That uh, is how markets work. There would be no need for the Fed to step in because corporate earnings are growing. There's no need. They're not there to protect the asset price in good times. 
uh, there'd be no need for any fiscal stimulus because corporate earnings are growing. Good news is good news, bad news is bad news. Let's come to the bottom of recession. <clears throat> All news is good news. All news is good news. If it's good news, the economy is going to improve. And since the market is a forward discounting mechanism, it'll discount the, uh, the future. Markets will rise in anticipation of a better future. That's economics. We learned that. If it's bad news, the Fed will do something or there'll be more fiscal stimulus, which means the economy will get better, which means asset prices will rise to discount that. So if you draw out a decision tree, good news, bad news, good news, improving economy. Bad news, more stimulus, improving economy. You get to the same conclusion no matter which way you go, you have no choice but to buy. Um, the Fed in this period of time has expanded its balance sheet by $3 trillion and squeezed all yield out of bond markets. That's $3 trillion it's pushed out of the market plus how much more money it's pushed out of those markets as well. ETFs for money market funds have shown some of the biggest outflows. Why? Because there's no money in, in money markets anymore. So you may as well go somewhere else. So it's showing huge outflows. Well, it's got to go somewhere. I've said this before. It's got to go somewhere. You have institutions that have an equity allocation. Uh, well, when bonds increase and equities drop, they're going to be very far away from their strategic asset allocation. It's time to lower their bond position and probably lower it even more on a tactical basis. And it's going to go to equities. And it has, and money has flowed, uh, flowed in. On Friday morning when I saw the futures up, I knew that that's the calculus the market was making. If the number's great, up we go. If the number's bad, the Fed's meeting next week, they'll do more, up we go. Either way, we were going up and we went up. Now, mind you, no one expected the number that came out. That number shocked me. I was watching Bloomberg and when Mike McKee was reading it, he said positive 2.5. He was sort of saying, hang on a sec, that doesn't right. I was thinking, oh, come on, man, you're reading it wrong. Just, you know, slow down and look at it. No, it was 2.5. Um, so, of course, then became the scramble for, well, how, how could everybody miss this? Because I missed it too. It didn't match up with any other data at all. It was inconsistent with all the data and it was way out there. And I'm thinking, well, you know, maybe the, the uh, uh, paycheck protection uh, program worked, but that didn't match the initial claims. Uh, and listen, I know there are Trump fans out there, but still I'm going to put this out there. Given this administration, I would not put data manipulation past them. That maybe that number is just managed because let's face it, last week, at the end of the week, that administration needed some kind of victory somewhere because the whole week just went wrong for them. The whole week. Anyways, that out of the way. Here is a, here's a general rule. Never short markets in recessions because there are huge, powerful, vested interests that want to see these things go up. The Fed wants to reinflate asset prices. Uh, and uh, the fiscal, of course, the government wants to get people back working. You got an election coming up. Neither side is going to win unless they're seen as really promoting the economy. The Democrats want to get money into the market, but they want to call it their money. So they call it the hero's bill. How many times have you heard Nancy Pelosi saying we call it our hero's bill? Give me a break. Just, you know, you're doing your job. You know, don't, don't look for fanfare when you're doing your job. And the Republicans want to get it out there, but each one, as much as they want to get that money out there, they want to get as much out there as they can. Each one wants to call it their own. This is Republican spending. This was Democrats. spending. They're both motivated to get the money out. There's another trillion in the wings. It's just there's a tug of war right now about what are we, is this Democratic money or is this Republican money? And neither one is going to give until one side uh, can claim victory saying we did this. So there's money coming. There's another trillion dollars that's going to go into the economy. Uh, on top of the $2 trillion that, have already, that has already gone out fiscally, on top of the $3 trillion that the Fed has already put out, and listen, they have unlimited resources. They just move zeros over, or decimal places over. They have unlimited resources. They're not going to do this and say, you know what? We're good. This is about as far as we want to go. We're good at this point. The rest is on you. <laughs> they go this far, they're going to see it all the way through. They're not going to stop which is a, uh, a license for investors to go long, and that's our bailout. It's always been our bailout. 
Uh, look, we bail out companies. Uh, the uh, government right now is bailing out employees everywhere. Central bank is there to bail out investors. By providing all of this, 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 this monetary stimulus, it hits financial markets first and then slowly finds its way into the real economy, whereas the fiscal finds its way into the real economy. When it hits the real economy and those people get money, they go spend it at companies that we own shares in. So we eventually get it. It just takes a longer uh, route to get to us. But when the central bank acts, we get paid first. We're first in the breadline. Uh, so when we look at wealth inequality uh, and we look at who's actually creating it, well, who do you think is creating it? People with experience know that when the Fed is buying, don't fight the Fed, just get in line because it's our bailout. We get bailed out. Uh, and the easy money, I think, has been made in this market. So where are we going from here? Uh, and I'm going to say it again. Don't short the market, especially in a recession, because you have vested interest. If the market uh, over the next two weeks pull back 200 points, I guarantee you there'd be another announcement of something. I guarantee you there'd be more money coming in the market. And that sets a floor on where we can go. Uh, that is going to set a definite floor. Now, I'm not saying the market's not going to test that theory. It may. There may be something that occurs where, okay, well, that's a bit of a problem. We're a bit concerned. We may pull back. But that concern will then be the Fed's concern and the government's concern, and they'll do something. And again, if we were up here, uh, then we stand on our own. Uh, then we live and die by the bets we make. But we're down here. We don't have to think about it. There is only one equity analysis. If the Fed is buying, go long, period. Combine that with, this is the long-term trend of equity markets. I can't find a short thesis on the broad market. You want to go short? Find individual names. Beyond Meat, I think, is still a good short position. Uh, and with the announcement it made last week, if you dig into the details, you're even more convinced that this is a, a uh, short position. Uh, but find individual positions, but don't short the market. You will get crushed. So for those of you thinking 3200 it's gone a little bit too far. Um, I started preparing this video about an hour before the markets opened and I've done a couple of retakes and retakes. The market is open. Uh, the futures market, Globex is open. Futures are up and not a little where I think we're up 14, 15 points. Futures are up and we're going to have a beautiful week. Uh, and I think we go up from here. I think a lot of money is going to come into this market next week. A lot of rotation is going to come into this market. Um, and a lot of long-term money is going to come into this market. You got the Fed meeting on Wednesday. Uh, they may do something uh, closer to yield curve control. Uh, they may, uh, uh, I believe the message, if they do nothing, they're going to say this. We have plenty of options left. We have lots of tools in the toolkit. Lots that we can do and without really saying much. What the Fed has been saying to you, for people with experience, we hear it very clearly. The Fed was saying this from day one. Hey guys, buy stocks, because I'm coming in. It's basically telling us, get long, I'm gonna bail you out, without actually using the words, because well, you can't really say, I'm gonna bail out investors now, or I'm gonna bail out Wall Street. But it's our bailout. Don't short this. now. Let me give you my uh, prediction on where I think S&P is going. And I'm going to be using December options for this, uh, December 18th, because I want year-end options for this, uh, is I'm going to go long a call. And I'm going to go short. I'm going to do another combo. I'm going to go short two puts. And I'm going to go long a call at 3,400, which gives me two short puts, I think, at 2320. So on the S&P, uh, that uh, is a $340 call. We're at $320, and that is a $232 put. That's two times put, and that's one times a long, and that's a short position. My year-end target for the S&P 500, 4000 which means $400 on the SPY. I'm sure a lot of you probably, if you were drinking tea, probably just spit it out. You're probably yelling at the screen. Uh, are you insane? Okay, he's drunk. He's drunk right now. Um, listen, is, if I would have told you six weeks ago, we're gonna be at 3,200, you would have had the same reaction. You would have said, come on. Okay, that's absolutely insane and ridiculous. 
And on an absolute valuation level, I agree with you. Where we are right now, uh, based on where the economy is, no, it is, it is separate from reality. The equity markets right now are not reflecting reality at all. But that $2.5 uh, $2 million jobs report is going to be met with more and more better data because we have seen it now. As soon as a state opens a door a little bit to say, okay, you can start doing these kind of things, the floodgates open up. Parks are crowded. Bars are crowded. Everyone's going to get right back at it. I did a video a couple of weeks ago about reversion to the mean, that human behavior will revert right back to where it was. Yeah, sure, there's a virus going on, but that doesn't stop people uh, in the streets from protesting. That hasn't slowed anybody down. Uh, some things are more important than others. I get that, but there's no social distancing there. We quickly forget, and we will. We will crowd the malls again. Friday, United Airlines announced that it's increasing the number of flights by 74% domestically. I thought the airlines were gone. Suddenly, the airlines had a beautiful day. Uh, on Friday because demand is there. It's going to come roaring back. Uh, I'm, I would never bet against the American market uh, because it is a particular type of capitalism. So I would never bet against that, which is why I don't short the S&P 500. Uh, even uh, in, uh, uh, if you think about uh, uh, late expansions, I still don't think it's a short. Uh, that's a, a time to move to cash. You don't like the markets, just move to cash, but don't short markets, especially American markets. And especially in a recession, especially when you have a Fed that's motivated to win. Uh, so there we go. One $340 call financed with two uh, $232 puts. And on Friday, just before the market closed, I could do that one for a negative cost. I think it was about negative $250. Uh, which means I would get paid $250 per, com per combo uh, that I did. And um, the margin for each one is around $2,700. You'd need, uh, if you put on one of these combos, you'd need at least $2,700 in, in securities in your portfolio to act as margin against this position. Uh, so there we go. Uh, I think 4000 is not an unrealistic number because 3200 you may say, uh, uh, six weeks ago was a completely unrealistic number, but here we are. Uh, so uh, I think that that we just we just keep going. There's too much money out there right now. The Fed has put so much money in the system and has dislocated so much money out of money markets and bond funds. It has to go somewhere. Long-term investors need to hit growth targets. It has to go somewhere, and I think it's going to really push. Uh, the U.S. markets uh, higher into uh, uh, the uh, the end of the year as we see the economy improve. I know there's a virus out there. I know it still exists. Uh, that will be something that will be dealt with when it uh, when it becomes a problem again. But right now, don't make a bet based on the virus uh, because you're you're betting on an event. Uh, let the event happen, and when the event happens and you have that liquidity sell-off, step in. That's where you make your money because I guarantee you vested interests are going to come in and push that market back up again. That's where you make your money, uh, not shorting the market. Okay, that's, uh, that's it. Now, this may be my last one for a while because, well, I got to get back to what I do, which is helping candidates pass the CFA exam. I Gave them a video last weekend saying it's time to get back to it, which means it's time for me to get back to it. And really, I think the, the uh, easy money has been made in this market because volatility has dropped significantly. And I think from here on in, we just continue to drift higher. I don't think we run to 4,000, but I think we continue to drift higher.